What is going on creative family? It's Dustin Volkema and today we're talking about a set of plugins from Retouch For Me that are the iVessels and the iBrilliance plugins which actually go very well with the set of plugins that I reviewed in a previous video which is the Heal, Dodge and Burn and Portrait Volumes. This is helping us finish the step of a fully automated portrait retouching pipeline. So let's go ahead and dive right into Photoshop and take a look. All right, so before we dive in, I have a link in the description that will take you to this page here that is going to give you a 20% discount on any of the Retouch For Me plugins that we're discussing here on the channel. So go ahead and check that out if you're interested. Now in Photoshop here, I've got two different images that we can start to use these plugins on. Now I'll take the first here, zoom into the eyes, and we can see that we have eye vessels that we may want to remove and get rid of. So we'll start with the eye vessel plugin. Now what we'll do is duplicate our background layer and then we can head up to filter, retouch for me, and then retouch for me eye vessels. Give it a moment here for the interface to pop up. So we can zoom right in to the eyes with the middle mouse or the scroll wheel. And we can take a look at the interface here. So on the top left, we have the original. This is going to allow us to preview the before and after. We can also do that in the viewport here with the space bar. Now we also have the brush tool, which is going to allow us to add to the mask that it's calculating, an eraser to remove from the mask that it's calculating, and a button to invert the mask. We also have the automatic human scale detection. We have the close up portrait, the half length portrait, and the full length portrait. So this is just going to adjust how the algorithm is reading your image and the amount of detail or scrutiny that it's putting into the effects that it's fixing. Now, at the very top, we have a blend slider, which is going to show us a heat map here as to where the artifacts are that it's replacing or fixing in the image. So in this case, it's showing up as that green or white color there in the eye vessels. On the right hand side at the top, we have the make mask, which is also the button that's going to make this a non-destructive part of the process and remove all of the identical pixels so that we're left with a nice, clean, non-destructive process. And at the bottom here, we have a button for feedback should we need that an apply button and a cancel button. So let's go ahead and apply the eye vessels effects. There we go. And we can immediately see the nice results here that it has on the eyes. So this is just one part. So this is just the eye vessels. I love how it has saved so much time from going in and maybe healing out. If you've ever healed eyes and gotten rid of eye vessels manually, it can be a bit of a tedious process depending on the amount of detail or texture that you can sample from there. Now we will notice that since we didn't start with a selection or we're just doing the eyes as an entire process, the algorithm picked up this piece in the nose here. So if I turn that off and on, you can see some of the effects that it has there. So the way that I alleviate this when I'm doing my work is I'll just grab my lasso tool and create what I call a garbage mask around the eyes and then create a layer mask. So now the effect for the eyes is just on this layer. So let's go ahead and take a look at the eye brilliance plugin with our layer selected here for the eye vessels, we can maybe rename that. We'll just go IV, and then we can create a stamp visible layer so that this is a non-destructive part of the process, just moving up the chain here. Now, with this one, we can name this IB for eye brilliance, and we can head up to filter, down to retouch for me, and then eye brilliance. And again, the interface here is going to look the same as the eye vessels, it's just going to be doing a bit more. So what I feel this is doing is a little bit more of a mix between the portrait volumes from the last video that's giving us a bit more of a pop. If we zoom into the eye here, there we go. 
and we can press the space bar for before and after, we'll see that it's actually kind of burning uh, the eyelids or the area here with mascara and eyeliner. It's brightening up the catch lights in the eye as well as the iris and a little bit of the sclera or the white of the eye and helping this all stand out a bit more. So I like the effects. Now we'll go ahead and click apply here. There we go. And now we have nicely and quickly retouched eyes. So the thing about this is that there are times where I feel like the eye brilliance may just brighten everything up a little bit too far. As with any other non-destructive process, we can go ahead and add a layer mask. Now we can grab a black brush and I have my flow set somewhere around 11% and I can just paint on the sclera of the eyes to tone that down and just alleviate some of those hot spots from happening. There we go. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. So let's go ahead and take a look at our second image. With this one here, we're actually going to do the same thing in duplicating our background, but we'll use a slightly different process. And this is one that I may start off with at times, and it involves using the marquee selection and going ahead and just selecting the eye area here. Now we can duplicate this, which is going to place those eyes on their own layer. And so we can go ahead and say I V, there we go, for the eye vessels. So we'll head up to filter with that selected, down to retouch for me, and then retouch for me eye vessels. And we'll make sure that we have the make mask selected and go ahead and click on apply. We'll see that we have this little area down below that is somewhat glitched out. That's okay. What we'll do is go ahead and just create a layer mask, B for the brush tool, and we can go ahead and paint this away. My flow is quite low, which is why it's taking a little bit more than normal. But nonetheless, we can see that we now have nice, clean eyes. And this is what I love about this process, is there are times where you may need to go in and do a little bit of work, but it's doing 90% of the work for you. It's retaining the shape of the eye and even some of the underlying color. So you could go ahead and whiten these if we wanted, but eye brilliance will also help take care of a lot of that. So let's go ahead and create a stamp visible layer here. And now we can head up to filter, retouch for me, and then eye brilliance. Okay, so let's go ahead and zoom in here. It looks like that's doing a pretty good job. I like the effects that it's giving off and we'll click apply, making sure that make mask is selected so that now we're only affecting the eyes themselves. Okay, and look at that. It has, it's done a good job of helping brighten and whiten the eyes. I may finish the image here with a little bit more of maybe a, a macro dodge and burn or kind of a, a skin shine, if you will, to really help that light direction pop. But overall, this process is really added a lot of nice contrast to the eyes and really helping those stick out. So at the end of the day, Retouch For Me does it again. I'm really happy that these plugins are now a part of my pipeline and that I can show you all exactly how I would use them on a day-to-day -day basis. All right, so that is going to wrap up this review on the Retouch For Me plugins, Eye Vessels, and Eye Brilliance. I really like the way that Retouch For Me is starting to automate quite a bit of the technical side of my workflow and this really just allows me to get back to the creative side and not focus so much on the muscle memory everyday kind of tedious tasks that we take while we're retouching by getting a lot of that process done for us automatically now again i do have a video that goes a bit more in depth on how to create actions using these plugins so go ahead and check that out link will be in the description as well and until next time create more say less and stay creative i'll see you then